demonstration, I'm going to be showing you the main features of the ReadEasy screening software. This is a really powerful system designed to help you diagnose and manage Mears Erlen syndrome or visual stress. When you've installed the program, the first screen that you'll see will be something like this. At the top level, you'll see that you've got your organization name, which might be your practice name if you're an optician, uh, or it might be a school name. And the first stage then is to add a client or a patient uh, to that organization. So you just click on Add Client. Uh, you'll find that the organizations that are available will be uh, at the top there. If you haven't yet uh, defined an organization, you can add it at this stage. You can add a class name if you're working in a school and a cohort, that's the uh, group of children that you might be testing. But the only compulsory fields are first name, family name and gender. So I'm just going to enter a first name and a family name and a gender and a date of birth. Uh, you can add ethnicity and reference number, dot tech and contact and a full address should you want to, but as I say, the only compulsory fields are the ones with stars. So you can now see that uh, Jack Simpson I've just added and now appears under the test school. Now the first stage when you're screening is to get some baseline measurements against a white background and we can then use those to see if there's any uh, increase in reading spree speed and decrease in symptoms when we add colour. So you just click on baseline at the top of the screen and the first stage would normally be to ask about symptoms and you'll see that this puts up a, a passage of text, it's just random text uh, it's known as the rate of reading test, so a series of words but not uh, in making any sense. Uh, there are several different passages of words, there are four different alternatives, uh, or you can just randomize the words. Or if you prefer, you can use a grating, and uh, this is sometimes uh, known as the pattern glare test. And it can be quite sensitive for uh, eliciting the symptoms of mears erlen sy syndrome. But I'm going to stick with words in the first arrangement. You can also put up text as well. So you'll see at the bottom of the screen it says do the words appear to move, wobble or flicker. And uh, you try and gauge the severity of the client or the patient's uh, symptoms just on a scale of no to, to yes. This is very subjective. But uh, let's say the patient is, uh, says the symptoms are quite marked. Uh, do the words look too close together? Well, sort of. Does the page look too bright or dazzling? Definitely yes. Does it hurt your eyes? No, not really. And then you can enter any other comments that the patient might make about those symptoms. So that's the first part of the test done. You can see symptoms now has a tick next to it. We then go on to the rate of reading test. And here you uh, simply start the clock at the bottom left here and uh, you ask the patient to read the words as quick, quickly and as accurately as possible. So they'll read, come see the play, look up, is cat not my and dog for you too. Every time they make a mistake, you uh, click on the plus sign here or you can press the space bar. It has the same effect and this just increments the counter. As the patient starts reading down through the text, if they suffer from Mears Island, it will become uncomfortable. The text the words may appear to move and wobble and flicker, they'll make more mistakes and uh, their fluency uh, will not be uh, that good, it will be affected by the symptoms. You would normally record for a minute, I'm going to stop the clock after just 40 odd seconds. And then to record the number of words per minute, all you do is click on the last word that they read. So let's say they got as far as not see my play and you'll see at the bottom of the screen it's automatically worked out the number of words per minute. Uh, so they read 39 words but in 43 seconds so that's equal to 53 words per minute and made three errors. So we've now finished the baseline measurements so you click on finish you can at this stage add any extra notes. Um, I, I've had to enter the name of the screener I've just called it screener 
you do that when you first run the program but this would normally show your name and click on save and job done now you'll see when I click on Jack Simpson here it's now got the baseline symptoms in the report so the next stage is then to see if color is of any benefit now you'd normally start by doing an overlay test so I've selected overlays uh, you could do this manually should you wish to that's you can see it's put up two passages of text and you can select any of the read easy colors as a background by just clicking on the little tile at the bottom and so if you want to do just a quick test you can do so uh, or you can select a gray by clicking in the middle but of course the beauty of doing it on a computer is that you can automate the process so I've now clicked on auto test and now the computer does uh, the complete routine for you so the task for the patient is simply to say which of these two colors is more comfortable to look at which one minimizes the symptoms uh, that they've reported and you force them to choose so let's say that one on the right is slightly better than the left this time the left is better than the right then left again now the blue looks good to me so I'm going to click on that those two they neither look great but I'd say the green is slightly better the green is better than the purple and the computer the program will automatically go all the way through all the different colors comparing every color with every other color and doing quite a lot of cross-checking along the way I'm doing this obviously very quickly the patient should take their time and consider each choice carefully this part normally takes about uh, four or five minutes when it's done properly and uh, you'll see now I've reached the end of that routine and as a final stage it compares the preferred color with a gray just as a control to see if the patient has chosen the the blue simply because it makes the screen a little bit darker rather than because of the color so I still prefer the blue to the gray and so that's the end of that test now of course all that tells you is that the patient prefers the blue um, to, to the white it doesn't necessarily mean that they can read any faster or to reduce their symptoms so we then repeat the rate of reading test so again start the clock and the patient reads come see the play look up hopefully now they've got their preferred color in the background they'll read faster more fluently and make fewer errors so again you'd normally record for a minute but I'm stopping the clock uh, now and let's say they got as far as that come and that's 86 words per minute and as a final stage you check their symptoms again this time with a blue background and hopefully if the color has helped then the symptoms will be reduced and any comments they might make against the blue background then once again you click on finish enter any comments that uh, you want to make save the result now you'll see under Jack Simpson it's now got the overlay test and the date that it was performed on and when I click on that you can see that the color preference is shown I've chosen read easy color F uh, the overall preferred color was F and F was preferred to the gray control and you can see at a glance that the uh, rate of reading was 53 against the white background that was your baseline with three errors and that's improved to 86 with one error that's a 62.3 percent uh, improvement in the rate of reading and you can also see at a glance that the symptoms have been ameliorated to some extent They're, they've been lessened by the use of color so there you have it at this stage you could uh, create a report you can simply print out the screen on the right if that's in the required format or you can select report and at the top of the screen we've got three reports you can actually design your own reports but if I want to do a general report I select it there and uh, there you've got a slightly different format report you could also do a parents report and if you've got a, an access if you've got access to the the printer there and then uh, you can print it out but usually just add it to the print queue close that and then when I click on print queue here uh, you'll see there's all the previous reports that I've stored in the print queue um, so you can then print those out 
by um, just going here and clicking on print or you can email them and uh, once if you want to remove them from the print queue just click on mark as printed. So that's the, the job done as far as overlays are concerned and overlays may be perfectly adequate for your patient you may need never to uh, move on from there but for people who get a significant benefit from using overlays they might also want the same benefit for writing and also seeing the whiteboard so you can actually do the test for read easy glasses the test is really almost identical to what I demonstrated for the overlays the only difference is that the whole screen is colored rather than just a patch and you should do this with the the room lights off so that the only thing within the visual field during the test is the colored screen and that simulates the effect of a tint so this is the manual test just allows you to show each of the colors one after the other that may be adequate or you can again select the auto test if you decide by the manual test that's the preferred color you just right click on the color and you'll see the H is currently set as the preferred manual color um, but normally you would do an automated test this just reminds you that you should have the room lights turned off while you're doing this and you'll see that it presents two colors but this time they're presented one after the other and the patient or client has simply to say which of the two they prefer the first or the second and you can repeat it if they're not absolutely certain and it goes all the way around comparing every color with every other color in exactly the same way as with the overlays it takes slightly longer because the two colors are shown successively rather than simultaneously having determined the optimum color once again you do the rate of reading test this time with the whole screen colored and uh, so you'd normally record for a minute again but I'm going to stop the clock there and let's say that we got to uh, there that's still a bit too many something like that um, and then you repeat the symptoms again with the whole screen colored if you double click on these uh, it moves on to the next question and job done so we now click on finish you enter any other comments uh, there and save it and now you'll see that we've got the read easy uh, tint and the preferred color was H you may well find that the preferred color for a tint is slightly different to the overlay that's because the whole visual field is tinted not just a part of it and once again you can see the percentage change in the rate of reading compared with the baseline reading you can do exactly the same for computer colors many people now spend just as long or longer looking at a computer screen than reading from a book so you can actually change the background color of a computer screen either by changing the windows colors or by downloading our virtual overlay software so that's a very brief overview of how the screening software works so not only will it uh, help you diagnose whether somebody is suffering from Mears Erlen syndrome it will help you determine the optimum color for a read easy overlay for a read easy clip on or spectacle lens or for uh, their computer screen it will also maintain a, a database of all your results and uh, will allow you to generate quite a wide variety of reports 